Hi there, and welcome to part two of our little investigation into the new Dutchie action within Fairbot's automation. Uh, today we're going to have a look at using the at runtime option to allow you to specify runners by name that will then be involved in the Dutch that you're going to create. So let me just pull up the strategy editor again. We'll go back into this blank demo. Let's just recap on how to set up the at runtime option. Essentially, you set up a number of um, a number of rules that will then prompt you for the name of the runner you want to select. So we'll just call this select first runner. And what we're going to do is set this up relative to start time, let's say 30 seconds before the off. The action that we're going to do is place a small bet. So first of all, we need to select um, at runtime. So this is the thing that will prompt us for our named runner. We're going to place a lay bet at odds of 1.01 for a fixed amount of one pound. So that's a liability of a penny. Um, and we're going to set the bet period persistence to none so that it gets cancelled at the off. We can also put in conditions, but we won't bother with that. And that's essentially all we need. Now just to um, recap what that does, if I save this or assign it to this coming race at Doncaster, that option provides you with this little click, uh, this clickable link here that then lists all the runners in this particular event. So what we need to do is set up a number of these to give us options to choose any number of runners that we wish to include in our Dutch. Now when I'm Dutching, specifically with a view to trading out, I never Dutch more than four runners. Um, if you're trading out, it becomes more and more difficult for that to happen the more runners you've got. If, however, you're Dutching as a standalone bet, uh, and you find that you frequently Dutch more than four, you will need to put in more than um, enough rules to allow you to make that number of selections. So all we need to do, first of all, <coughs> excuse me, what we need to do, first of all, is simply uh, copy and paste those in. I'm going to do four. Edit the text as normal, so that's going to be select second runner. Everything else will be the same, and so on down the list. So I'm going to set up four. Now, keeping in mind that when you come to actually specifying your runners by using these four rules, you don't actually need to specify four runners every time. If you if you uh, leave one of them unselected, it just means that that runner, there will be no runner selected by that rule, uh, and so essentially it will be ignored. So again, if I save that, you'll see the four in there, and we can choose runners at each level. So that's the at runtime option, allowing you to select your runners in advance. So of course, we then still need to go in and do our apply to all rule. So I'll recreate that one. Uh, using the apply to all option. Now what this is going to do, again, we need to set this off um, after these ones have been selected. Okay, so this is set up to the start or fire 30 seconds before the event. So we'll pop this in at 10 seconds before the start time. We need to make sure that this is applied to all. The action, there's no, nothing actually needing doing with this. So again, we can choose dummy. And but the conditions we need to do is to check for the presence of these bets sitting at 1.01. So we use selection bet count. Make sure the selection option is set to all because this needs to create rules for each individual runner 
in the market. That should be equal to 1. There should be a lay that's unmatched and it's single odds of 1.01. So in other words, this rule is going to check each one up and to see if it's got an, an unmatched bet sitting at 1.01, an unmatched lay bet, I should say, sitting at 1.01. Click on OK for that. We'll get this warning that I showed you in part one. Just click on yes to confirm that, that's OK. So that will set up the apply to all rule. And you'll see that set to sort of blue to show you that it's using the apply to all. And then finally, we need to create another rule that will actually do the Dutch end. So again, relative to start time, we'll set this off to go on at the start time. So in other words, we need to give the apply to all rule time to action and make sure that selections are specified. And then we can go in and do the Dutch. So the option we're going to do here is, um, where are we, Dutch in. Specify our amount. And then click on the bottom option here and choose selection for abduction, which is the rule we created with the apply to all switch on. We'll leave the odds to take best back odds and we will go to keeping. We can also apply conditions, so let's um, do the same as we did before. Choose the market book percentage, set that to let's say um, less than 80. And make sure that we specify our apply to all rule as well, from which the Dutch will take its selections. And that's it. We're all ready to go. Save all that. So now we've got eight minutes to go. I just clear that out of the way. I can make my selection. So I just randomly choose two or three selections. And what I'm going to do. Is I'm only going to choose three runners. So this fourth runner isn't going to be selected. So we'll still get a Dutch being created, but it's only going to be for the three runners. And that fourth selection specified here will be ignored. So what will happen is 30 seconds before the off, we'll get our little bets going in, our little control bets that's sitting at 1.01. And then 20 seconds later, the apply to all will kick in and identify those runners as the picks for the slave for the uh, Dutch. And then the Dutch will kick in and uh, apply the Dutch to the market. So let's skip ahead um, until near the time and see that in action. Okay, we're just coming up to the 30 second mark, so we should find these rules here firing. There you go, those first three fire, but that one doesn't because we haven't specified a runner. And we'll find we've got our little control bets in there sitting at 1.01. And then in another 10 seconds, we'll find that these rules all fire or try to fire. And what of course, you'll find there's only three of them fire for these corresponding runners. And if you look down here, you'll see that there's been one rule created for each runner in the field. And there you go, that uh, these three selections, those rules have fired and consequently the Dutch has then gone in and fired. And if we look at my bets, there's our Dutch sitting across those three runners for a total stake of 100 pounds. And that's it. All easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay guys, that's the new features within the Dutching action uh, within Fairbox automation feature. Uh, give it a bash and see how you get on. The important thing being is that if you wish to use that functionality, you need to set up a rule using the apply to all option. And it's that from which the Dutching rule derives its selections for the Dutch. 
Okay, thank you very much for listening. I'll speak to you later. Cheers.